Hey, it's Steve Townsend, principal of the CTO Advisor. I'm joined with Josh Hilliker, who hasn't been on a CTO Advisor video in person. So, yeah. Josh, welcome in person. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, this you, is great. Yeah, you've been on the CTO Advisor studio video in general. We were talking to our good friends at Dell about their VxRail uh, solution that was the pre-days. But now we're back in normal times at Google Cloud Next. Google had a really interesting set of announcements uh, mm -hmm. at the conference around their Duet AI. And my first impression was, oh, cold assistant. Yeah, the, everyone has a cold assistant. But it goes further than being a cold assistant. It is kind of, I call it cold DevOps. I know you're a big infrastructure cold person and you're a big uh, policy as cold person. So we'll get into how that ties in in a second. But the thing that I found interesting from the Google conversation, or let's call not the thing I found interesting, but the problem is I can take Duet. It can look at my Google workspace data. It can look at my security data. It can look at my uh, application data and do all these cool things from help me create a marketing blog post from the workspace data to help me migrate my Oracle database to a uh, cloud DB to even helping me through my security logs. But there was two problems that you, that came up to me. One, how do I do that on prem or in another public cloud? And two, how do I make sure that my policies are being followed in the cloud across all these platforms? How do you think about these problems? No, it's a great, oh, thank you so much. I'm stoked to be here, so thank you. When we look at, um, when I look at the, how do you do governance, right? It's like, and, and you know, the industry called it PAC policy as code, but it's, and it started out with that whole security compliance, right? Is Porton Protocol turned on, right? Do I have this? Have I looked at for, um, you know, for DDoS standpoint? Do I have any backdoors? Like, but the governance conversation is so much more rich now, right? It is around, am I executing and operating the right workloads at the right place in the right cloud in the right way? So it brings like that, all those pieces together. Of, okay, am I, am I putting the right controls in place? And we're not, What's great about, to me, from a governance standpoint is, I'm not, put, you know, cloud has opened the door for all to come play, but in a corporation, that's a scary thing, because I don't want all to play. Right. I want all to participate, but to participate within certain rules or guidelines. And that new governance, that policy as code coming in governance says, this is how we're going to play. So this is how we're going to do it on-prem, this is how we're going to do it in the cloud, and this is how we do it with our multi or poly cloud or whatever you want to call it, that multiple zones I'm going to operate in. We say, we're going to play this way. Whether that's architecture, whether that's how we're going to land our cloud databases, whether it's how we're going to you know, monetize our data and use it for things like you talked about, and being able to pull it into the marketing briefs or into customer support, or be able to pull it into documentation in the easier way and use your workspace. It's like that whole governance angle has been so exciting. And what's interesting is for me is that it starts, it, it can start at a different place in the cycle. So let me draw a cycle if I may. Oh yeah. Okay, let's do it. All right, so let's talk, let's talk about the life, the life of a, an instance or a, uh, a machine or just, let's put it right here. Okay, so we have this machine here. And when I start the machine, I'm gonna be basically bringing provision of that machine, okay? And I wanna make sure I know, and bear with my writing, I'm sorry, no practicing, no. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm provisioning this machine right here to get the right rules in place, okay? So this, and you think of this as like kind of the, the start. This is my, my A0 state, right? When I am in the cloud and I'm operating already, we'll call it my A1 state, okay? And with provisioning, I am, when we usually what we'll call this is infrastructure as code, IAC, where I'm putting all the rules that are in here. So how is my data going to, you know, how is it going to be created? Who's going to have access to it? How's that going to work? So it's kind of think of it as pre-governance on what's happening. Once it's into AO, I'm out there in the market. I'm out there in my infrastructure on-prem, what have you. And things, you know, it, it's working, it's doing its workload, okay? At A1 is, is kind of 
the next day, what have you, where it is now operating, it's doing this business function, but my ability to do things with this is hampered if I only play on IAC. I need to play the backwards way, mm. right? So that's where I would bring in PAC or governance. And the interesting angle for me on PAC is that I don't have to start ACK to get PAC. Boy, a lot of acronyms, sorry. I don't have to start <laughs> IAC. I don't have to do IAC first to get PAC. I can do PAC in. So I can do governance of. So what's great is that even in a brownfield environment, I can still play with a governance angle. And so, so I was, uh, I was abstracting the conversation in my yeah. mind. You know, we talked about machine, VM, storage, some type of node that we're controlling with IAC and that we're managing with PAC on the A1. But this abstraction can be a number of things. It can be Lambda code, it can be uh, security policies, it can be whatever configuration object that we're trying to create policy around, a consistent policy. And as we abstract that, that allows us to move it from AO, which may be development. This is, you know, yeah. we're, yes. we're, we're yes. all AI right now. So this yeah, could yeah, be yeah. an AI process that is using one set of hardware and features on premises. And then when we need to burst out, we can move it to A1. Our provisioning process and language just needs to be robust enough to be able to work in AO and A1 as well. That, yes, I would absolutely. So let's, let me add some more here. So we add here, we can talk about the recipe. The conf yeah, the figure, well, I can't spell apparently. So <laughs> the recipe, apologies, it was run on. We'll get but, AI to fix it. Okay, yeah, you know yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. So we got the recipe, that all that configuration, that rich configuration information that goes into A0, right? And you're right, you absolutely can take that recipe and go on-prem, on cloud, wherever you need to, right? So you can set an A12, an A13, and say, oh, look, I now can put this in many multiple environments and I can still use governance back on it to make sure that all the right rules are being, you know, held up to. Is it going right? Is the rest to be maintained? Did it do the right thing? Now, one other aspect that was in um, intriguing about this whole fast emergence of AI, right, to me is, you know, I, I love the sound of AI. I love using, you know, chat GPT. I love what it's done with cockpit in my code when I'm writing code. Right. I love what they've done now in Outlook where it's telling me what to say before I want to say it, right? And finishing my sentences off like in a direction sometimes I don't want it to go, but it, it just com auto completes for me. Um, it, but it's how to get started and how do I make sure that um, I'm using the best recipe in town? How am I getting? So when you talked about, you know, what's my, you know, beyond the ports and protocols, but also like what's the configuration of the stack? Right, stack config matters to me, and that's another element I'm gonna I'm gonna throw on the board here is how do I take in this world of IAC and PAC, how do I add something to it? And we're adding OAC to it, optimization as code. So Intel has this strategy or philosophy about using accelerators and. Uh, uh, offload capabilities where appropriate. And one of the things I get kind of stuck on is, okay, I have, let's say AMX or TLS acceleration on premises, and I'm creating policy mm -hmm. around that mm -hmm. capability here. If this is the public cloud and I'm creating hardware-based acceleration specific to my on-prem capability, how do I translate that policy to the public cloud. So good. So good. <laughs> I, I wasn't, right. I wasn't no. expecting your response to be so good. That's so, so good. good. It was supposed that, to be like, Keith, you know what? Uh, that's the future. No, that's just so good. That's so good. So let's, um, let me show a, a couple different things. So let's talk about an application and we're going to do an on-prem application versus a cloud. But in the cloud. In the on-prem environment, I have the ability to do, and I'm going I'm to get to your answer your question. But I can do things like, let's talk about the hardware config, I can do the BIOS config, and I can do the app stack config. And what you were talking about is, okay, I've got all this layered out with all of the configuration information I need to operate on-prem. So I know, for example, 
pardon me, we'll do a plug, fourth gen, right. Xeon, scalable processors with AMX. Okay? Right. And I, uh, I could just put SPR to be cool, since we could still say that. Sapphire Rapids. Okay. So, fourth gen Xeon scale processor. <laughs> so we got that on, on prem, right? And I know my stack looks like this of how I need to operate it, right? And the question is, okay, how do I take this recipe and easily apply it to the cloud, right? And what's, what's great is with OAC, we start to now open up what's exposed over here. So what, what are my kind of, I'll do my bad gear turning wheel here, but like what, what knobs are you going to give me over on, like for example, in C3, Right. what can I touch off this list? So we know we can touch part of this, and we can touch part of this, and I can hit this subset of rules. So as you're doing policy creation that's impacting on-prem, you can set the rules and say, okay, this is what's going to be like for on-prem, and as soon as I translate to C3, here are the knobs you will still send to C3. And give folks context, we're using this term C3. C3 is the uh, Xeon scalable fourth gen instances available in Google Cloud. We talked about that in the Google instance where we talked about you do a development process on premises. You can take that same development process and migrate it to Google Cloud without making changes to the system now we're talking one layer lower than that. How do we create platforms? Where does this become practical to you, my audience perspective? So if you're a platform engineering group and you want to create a generic platform that, that's available to all of your development team and there's capabilities you want to expose, hardware capabilities, in this case, AMX for accelerated uh, AI and machine learning, now that you can take these consistent systems with OAC and apply this capability to your both on-prem systems and Google Cloud-based systems. You can build a reliable contract or infrastructure for your developers to consume. That's the theory. Yeah. Well, we're see. Okay. We're beyond theory, though. Okay. Okay. So, and I'm going to connect the dots here. So. OAC is a, is a combination of recipe, it's a combination of the module itself that does the provisioning, and it's a touch to the governance with the policy. So the beauty is like today, we just launched this uh, in the last week is for Google Cloud C3 instance with fourth gen Xeon scale processor, we have AMX support. So we are doing fast chat AI in OAC and Stable Diffusion so that you could do both image or text and it's available. Now the beauty is when uh, when we start to, to dive into the OAC space, we talk about a repeatable known model that's easy to deploy that takes seconds. So I could in a matter of three to four minutes right now, I could deploy a fast chat server and start asking questions. Now, this is not trained, this is inference, mm -hmm. but the beauty of to, you know, anybody in the market, it's like, you don't need to know AI if you want this capability. You need to understand how OAC works and deploy it. So, funny enough, they gave an example of this on stage at Google Cloud, Cloud this morning during the keynote, the creating a similar type of concept or, uh, or platform in literally two to three minutes. So I know that that capability exists. Josh, I really appreciate you stopping by and sharing kind of the story. As we think through how do we get control of our hybrid environment? How do we leverage our on-prem assets, our off-prem assets? How do we ensure governance is followed throughout the entire process? This is the low-level fundamentals that we need to think about. What is it? that we're trying to model and how do we abstract that across the our different in, environments and how do we serve that up to the consumers of our infrastructures? Fabulous conversation. If you want to learn more about the CTO Advisor, you can follow us on the web, thectoadvisor.com. Thank you for our sponsors from Intel for sponsoring this entire video series from Cloudflare to Google Cloud to Dell Technologies. And finally, this conversation with Intel has been a pleasure.
talk to you next CTO Advisor Studio production.